Hi everybody, it's me Jason, and we got Hero of Time versus Kala for this week's video analysis. Hero of Time plays Link and Kala plays Ivysaur, and I do think that both of these characters, um, at like, you know, sort of, if you think about them abstractly, they do very similar things. Ivysaur is like a zoning character, she has like forward air, she has like vines, back air hits behind her, and she has like a razor leaf to kind of, you know, like a projectile to like slow stuff approaches, catch people off guard, down tilt for zoning. Like she's a zone heavy character, look at all these vines that I drew around her, right? Mid range, projectile, not a lot of really close fast moves. And that's gonna, that's gonna be somewhat similar to a traditional Link. Right, Link will have like let's say boomerang can go out and about. You can have bombs that you can throw. You have like sort of less zoning tools the way that Ivysaur has long disjoints, but you do have you know like up tilts. Right, up tilts good. Like Link has small kicks, back air, forward air is a little disjointed. Right, um, but pretty much like they have similar-ish tool sets. You can see that like they, like Ivysaur has a projectile, Link has a projectile. They have disjointed moves. Similar to each other, different directions maybe. Ivysaur's down tilt, similar to like maybe like a link down tilt's a little shorter. He also has forward air, the same way as Ivysaur's forward air. But like he obviously Link hits a little harder. That's what the matchup looks like in theory. There is a lot of similarities, but you have to keep in mind that players are not their characters, and sometimes players play styles sort of emerge and have different behaviors. So like right here, this is how you think a, a match would start, right? They drop down, both throw their projectiles, boom, right? It's a stalemate. It's gonna be like a really lame and campy match and both characters are gonna try to zone each other. Um, but, the, but the fact is that Hero of Time actually isn't like that. Like he uses different tools inside of this character's toolkit. And because of that, you're gonna see things that you aren't gonna see in, in uh, a traditional Ivysaur versus Link match if they're playing like the way that you expect them to play, right? Hero of Time does things like this, right? This boomerang is fine, but this Nair is something that you are not gonna see a lot of Links doing. Link typically is more ground-based and typically is staying away, but Hero of Time is very in your face, right? And because he's in your face, he's gonna be eating a lot of moves, a lot of stray hits. You're gonna be seeing a lot of wins and losses in neutral that are like, they seem kind of random. You can you can like think of them as like, wait a second, how did he, it's like a scuffle, you know? He tried here, but then, uh, um, you know, like Kala's dash dancing and he double jumps and he tries again, you know, to bait or something, but Kala comes in with a short hop nair. It's gonna catch him, he's gonna eat a little bit of damage, right, tech chase, and eats about 40% um, for that. So like, look how close these players are, right? Like, and this is all because, well, I'm not too sure, but I'm like sort of focusing on hero time for this analysis. But the way that he's playing in is changing the momentum and the pacing of the match. Hero time also, just, I, I really like his, his use of Nair. This is one of my favorite Nairs. Like this is my favorite Nair of the game. He like does a million of them, but, but look at that one. That one's so good. Here, I'm gonna do it again. Like. Nair has so much, so many active frames, and like, it's like, the fact that that little back triangle of your leg hits is so good, hits the leaf, hits Ivysaur, sets up into an edge guard, right? I'm gonna talk a little bit about the tether punishes and opt little optimizations about that later, but like, look at, look at um, Hero of Time right here. Like, this is way more aggressive. This is still like, like, zoning, right? You're still using the disjoint of your character um, to keep an opponent out. But look at these these aggressive short hop forward airs. Jumping right over the down tilt here. Jumping and like fading in. Like kind of like getting around the dash dance, jumping out, barely avoiding the dash attack. These forward airs are something that like, you know, like you, you, you would have like, like, you know, like a Marth with his forward air pressure sort of, right? It's a little, it's a little more aggressive looking. Like Link has projectiles, so you anti you anticipate and you expect him to do that, but Hero of Time doesn't. Um, and just the way that he chooses to play this character. Um, ooh, another good nair. Look at this. Razor Leaf, boom. He plays in your face. He make he like if you're in, if you're expecting to play a certain type of Link, Hero of Time is going to give you a different one. And because of that, like things like this are going to happen. 
Um, maybe his item management isn't as good. Um, this bomb pluck, kind of, he dash dances a little too close to Ivysaur. Gets clipped by this, leads into a little bit of damage. He freaks out, AGTs into himself. But he's out, right? And that that's kind of like this is also another a little risk that you run, is when Link's moves aren't super like they don't they they lose to crouch cancel this nair it's super it's fast it's like Link's fastest move, but like it gets ASD eyed down you know like he he tries to go for a pivot grab I guess gets down tilted, and yeah I I, I just think that like. This is a very interesting way to play the character, and I want to contrast that with how Kala is playing his Ivysaur, right? Because I think that he's playing it sort of more traditionally. He is using his zoning moves to catch an approaching player, right? Uh, just to go, just to go into a little bit about Ivysaur. Ivysaur's Razor Leaf has, in my opinion, two main functions and two main heights. You have the Whirly Twirly on the ground, and then you have the Short Hop Razor Leaf, right? These, and like, this is very similar to like a Falco laser, and I, I'm pretty sure Wolf can do similar things with his Blaster, although not really. Um, you have two options, and you, can, and you can force different approaches with this Razor Leaf. It's really slow, right? So it's going to be a zoning tool. It's different from, another pro from other projectiles. Um, if you shoot it on the ground, you're going to force your opponent. Let's, let's go through them one by one. If you shoot it at the ground, you're forcing your opponent to jump. They either have to jump or they have to shield it. If they do, if they don't, right, um, or, or clank, there are like a lot of things to do. But you're forcing them to respond to this razor leaf. Um, you're forcing them to go high, or else if they hit it, because it's so slow, Ivysaur can follow up, right? But let's say that this razor leaf hits um, Link here. Ivysaur can get a dash grab. Ivysaur can get maybe like a short hop fair, or a down tilt, right? It's a low commitment option, but it has a lot of rewards attached to it. So that's what you do if you throw it on the ground. You basically bait them into shield, bait them jumping over it. If they're in shield, then you can grab them. If they jump over it, then you could do like a short hop fair, maybe like nair them, like like we saw in the interaction before where Hero of Time came down with a nair, right? And then double jumped with another nair. But before the nair could come out, Ivysaur came in with a, uh, a nair of her own going this way, right? That's something that we can see that this razor leaf forces. And that's just the grounded one, right? Like zoning tools are super important to understand all of the all of the consequences. If we're now to talk about the short hop one, Ivysaur can short hop. She short hop shoots a razor leaf this way. That's gonna force your opponent to not jump. Like it's at forehead height, so they're either like you know if they're really cheeky about it, they can crouch. Like Link's duck puts him like right about here. He can duck under a, a razor leaf. This whole trajectory will dodge him, right? He can block with a shield. But he can't jump. If he jumps, then the exact same thing happens. He's hit by the multi-hits of the Razor Leaf. Ivysaur can jump up, do like a short hop fair. Maybe Ivysaur can get a dash attack off or something like that. But this this move is a combo starter, and you gotta be very cognizant. Hero of Time loses a lot, like loses a lot off of getting hit by this Razor Leaf because of his spacing and stuff. All right, this was a good use right here, Hero of Time rolls out. This is kind of what you have to do. When it's the grounded one and you're this close and you shield, you just roll out. That's fine. Right? Putting on the aggression again with these short hop fairs that we're talking about. Very non-traditional from a Link. Um, or maybe it is traditional and I don't know. Like I don't really play Link, but when I think about Link and think of him intuitively, he's not he's not really doing this. Doing these double jump baits. Like Hero Time likes to jump a lot. He likes to use the platforms a lot, which is really strange. And I think that um, now's as good a time as any to go into the tether punish because that's where I think hero time misses a lot of opportunities and let's go into the mechanics of a tether character okay so quick 101 Ivysaur and Zero Suit Samus are the only two characters in the game that have up B tethers up B tethers um, and like you have Samus Lucas Toon Link and Link are the Z tether characters, which they they have an up B, right? But they also have the same properties as like, you know, they have this auto snap feature. Okay. So what is a tether? What are the good, what are the pros, what are the cons? And um, how do you exploit it? Because many characters can exploit tether recoveries. Tether recoveries, first off, are automatic sweet spots. So biggest scrub mistake 
Ivy Store's off stage. Let's say that you're Marth or your or your whatever. Like you want like a lot of players go for on stage edge guards, right? Like let's say that I'm Link. I'm gonna charge a down smash and I'm gonna hit this area, right? This will work against like let's say a Captain Falcon covering from below. Or like, you know, maybe like a Ganondorf, Olimar, Diddy Kong, Sonic. Most characters, right? Like char some characters it's like it's hard to sweet spot or something. So then you can get this little hit, you can get this down smash off. But that option literally does not exist with an upbeat tether. Upbeat tethers automatically sweet spot. That's like what they do. So first off, on stage edge guards do not work. Do not try an on stage edge guard against a uh, tether character. Hero of Time is, is smart enough to not do this, but I see that happen a lot, it needs to be said. Second thing is what, like you have to understand how vulnerable a tether character is, okay? There are pretty much, like you have, to, you have to know how strong and weak they are simultaneously. Let's look at this. Let's look at Ivysaur doing a tether right here, right? Boom, tethered, right? How quickly can a character get to ledge? Looks like three or four frames is what Ivysaur takes. Literally anywhere. Once you make that connection, you press the A button, you are on the ledge in four frames at most, depending on how far away you are from the ledge. That is super scary for like a lot of characters. Um, so like, let's say I'm Link right or anybody and and like i'm a zero suit samus player uh personally so i do this i like can recognize when these situations happen ivysaur is down here right this is ivysaur hi ivysaur my name's jason nice to meet you so like she is out here and she looks real tasty and you want to come down and you just want to kill her you know offstage edge guards are like really common you know um i'm link i come down and i want to do a nair i want to nair her like this boom falls down hits her right but if i'm slightly off then ivysaur can sneak under grab this vine and then yank herself all the way up so now what we have here is we have ivysaur on ledge and now this link who had just nared down is out out here ivysaur has invincibility and can now do a back air or something and push link out the person who was edge guarding is now getting edge guarded instantly that doesn't happen with a lot of characters. A lot of characters have upbeats that are really slow, really telegraphed, like the animation is very long, so then they can't you can't get reverse edge guarded. With tether characters, you can, and you have to be very careful about that. Which is why, like, you see like Hero of Time right here, he kind of isn't su like he's staying on stage right here. He is respecting the tether, right? And that's one way to do it. Take your stage control and just say, oh my god, I don't know. It's okay to not know. It's okay to not like want to kill yourself all the time. But you also have to know when it is good to like uh, push it. Because tether punishes or tether characters can be um, uh, they can be exploited. And this is this is this is a good way to um, I guess he doesn't do it at all this entire sequence, so I'm gonna have to kind of just be be in the, in like sort of theory craft mode. So, wait a second, Jason. You just said that this character can like snap ledge, auto sweet spot, reach it in four frames, and then just has ledge instantly. Isn't this super overpowered? The answer is yes, but like not as much as you think. Because what if Link was standing on? And this is super basic Smash again. I like talk about super basic stuff. If Link is occupying ledge then Ivysaur can't grab ledge. Two people can't be on the ledge at the same time and smash. And that's just a rule. So what the game does is it says, oh, Link is on the ledge. When Ivysaur presses A, she has to do what is called a forced reel in. She is super vulnerable during this forced reel in animation. Like if you grab ledge, like this is you, and you grab ledge before Ivysaur reels in, then you have put her in the worst position that she could possibly be in. Um, and same thing goes for Zero Suit Samus. They only have tether tether grabs. Um, to a lesser extent, this applies to the other tether, tether characters, Samus, Toon Link, Lucas, but because they have the up B mix up, it's a little less strong on them, but especially against Ivysaur. What you gotta do is realize 
and this is a, I'm going to drop a little bit of frame data stuff on you right now, is that I think that it's 50-ish frames where they are inactionable after they press the A button. If you are here, Ivysaur jumps, and it takes 50 frames for her to do anything, okay, or 40 or something. So it's like, okay, she can't attack. She literally has to go through this entire animation. She can fade back, you know, maybe she fades back, and then after 50 frames, she can up be back to ledge again, you know? That's one half of what happens to the tether character. We aren't even done with how bad this is. Like, right here, you can punish all of this stuff already. A lot of char like some characters can even just react to the reel in, put out, like, let's say Marth, right? Marth can react, see that Ivysaur is reeling back, back at her, whatever. She's like dead. She's floaty enough to get a second try, but then just back at her, back at her again. Hold the ledge and wait to react, right? That's 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 already really good. But the but the, the other thing is like, oh, what if they fade in? I don't really get that strong of a punish, right? Because it's like they have 50 frames, but then they land on the ground and then they dash back into stage, right? I just kind of gave up center stage. The answer is, you don't give up center stage either, because after they land on the ground they have another like 40 or 50 frames where they can't do anything they are stuck on the ground so there is so much time so much time you know this game runs at 60 frames a second so you have like a second and a half one and a half seconds to do anything you want when you are like if you are jigglypuff you can literally on reaction either back air the tether character out or wait for them to land on stage, get up, like even like a neutral get up, and then rest them. That's like, that's how exploitable these tether characters are. And if you, if this character is so strong in certain aspects, if I go for the offstage edge guard and I miss and I die, because that happens very often, that's like super good. You have to balance that out by, by understanding how tethers are super bad at the same time. So that's something I'm gonna point out. That was, a, that was a momentary diversion from this match. Hero of Time does not, like let's, let's look at this tether sequence. There are multiple opportunities for him to do the force tether, right? But he doesn't recognize it. Instead, he chooses to stay on stage because he is afraid of the off stage. If he goes off stage against Ivysaur, he could, he could potentially die, right? But if he stays on stage, then he'll live. But you have to keep in mind about like playing, just playing on the ledge, grabbing ledge is very strong. And that's an option that I will uh, revisit. Hero of Time gets a cheeky death right here. Very unfortunate. And that's that super swings it into Kala's favor. But again, let's go, let's go back to what we were talking about earlier about Hero of Time and his use of sort of like, just like, just being really mad crazy at approaching. See how he throws this boomerang. It's like, he's throwing it because he could, he doesn't have anything else to do. It's not like he's actively using it to zone Ivysaur. It's sort of like, hey, you know, I'm approaching, while I'm approaching, might as well throw this thing out, you know? And, and here, Hero of Time just wastes a lot of time, like Hero of Wasting Time, I guess. Shoots a couple arrows when this entire time he could just be holding the ledge. Ivysaur's at 96, right? He jumps back, throws a Nair out, which is like... It's, it's good, it's like an idea, right? You can imagine a world where Ivysaur is a little slower, right? Blah, 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 Ivysaur, oops, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I was trying to turn the pen tool on. So, you can imagine Ivysaur just kind of blah, blah, and she like sits here and tethered to the thing for a long time. This Nair is good, this triangle Nair will just come down, swipe her, she goes down just like the first stock, right? That's wishful thinking sort of. I mean, it could happen, right? And that's that's what Hero Time goes for. But the easier thing to do would be to just grab the ledge. If you grab the ledge, then you force Ivysaur into that 100 plus frames of end lag, like I said earlier, and Link has a really strong punish on tethers. He could down air them. Down airing Ivysaur at this percent is like pretty much either gonna send her off the stage on the other side or it's gonna kill her off the top or something. Um, again, let's see right here. Hero of Time gets clipped by little things because he's too he's too close, right? He's playing way too close, so he gets hit by that that uh, uh, Razor Leaf. There are very specific ways you have to respond to Razor Leaf. Oh, I know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, and again, like, well, yeah, so like, let's look at this. This is the other version of the razor leaf, the short hop razor leaf. And what does Hero of Time do? He jumps, he jumps into it. And because he jumps into it, he loses a little bit of stage. The boomerang thankfully helps him out, but like he, that, this was a forward air. Like Ivysaur was kind of getting close to getting a forward air, but yeah. Notice who's doing the approaching. And once you understand the momentum of how a set is going, then you can understand the relationships that these players have with each other um, and how they could change things, like how to make adaptations, right? Right now, I think that Hero Time is playing fine, but he is, he's, he's being evened up because of that, that really low percent kill. But still, we've only seen the game happening at one pace. The one where Hero of Time is approaching and the one where Kala is defending. See this right here? Um, I think he accidentally does a, a, a get up, but good on Kala to throw the Razor Leaf out just to get the confirm. Dash attack, Solar Beam. Nice. We're getting a couple points from Solar Beam, but it doesn't really matter. It's last stock. He's probably not going to get another one for the next time. Right? And like, Hero of Time is like kind of going. He's going in, you know? Like something like this, this nair, I would I wouldn't call it a particularly good nair. It's like, it's like forcing, because here here's the thing about being super aggressive, is that you don't have to be super clean when you're being aggressive. Some like most of the time, some most of the time you can be kind of sloppy about it. And if you're sloppy about it, you pretty much just force your opponent to play really sloppy too, you know. Like, like, you're going to get things like that. But, you know, again, it gets crouch cancelled. Like I said earlier, that's a problem. But he crouch cancels himself. If you are approaching and you're making the game happen a lot faster than, like, let's say the, proje the projectile zoning game where they're both, like, kind of farther out, then, you, like, it's okay that you're playing messy because you're making your opponent play messy too. That's, like, even. Um, don't worry about what's optimal. Worry about, like, what... It, like worry about making your opponent do moves and stuff. If you if you are doing stuff that's making your opponent uncomfortable, that's perfectly fine. If it's not like super good. Um, I'm surprised I didn't get hit by the bomb. Yeah. So like, Hero of Time is going to. Yeah. So right here, it's sort of a, a little bit of a change, right? Because um, Kala has ledge, it's a little harder to go a little more aggressive. So Hero of Time backs up, throws a couple projectiles. You know, a little bit of the zoning game here with the Zare. But again, we're back in. And this sort of one... Yeah. And th and that's like kind of... Oh, again. Hero of Time, like... It, every single stock was sort of like... A very, like, barely got killed stock. But it's because he's getting tapped a lot. And like, he's getting tip-tapped by like little hits. Little losses in neutral, you know what I mean? Like right here, because he power shields, this this back air gets rolled through, right? That allows for this to happen. Bad DI into death. But yeah, like I think that ranged characters are interesting in the sense that um, they force certain options. You definitely saw that on Kala's side. Hero time was coming in, but because Kala was throwing out those hitboxes, it was able to push him out. He was able to come out ahead on trades. And because, like, you know, tip tap, like, there weren't any big combos on Kala's side. There were a lot of, like, sort of stock ending combos, but they weren't super massive. Hero of Time was electing to take a little bit of damage so he can do a little bit of damage in the scuffle, you know? Oh yeah, I hit a nair. Oh yeah, you hit a down tilt. I teched away. I rolled. It's not super big, but you're forcing it to happen. You aren't. You don't have the long, flowy neutral when you're playing further away, where you have like, let's say, a boomerang confirm into like, like a forward air dash attack as link or something. I don't know if that's even a combo, but just having control is is typically what you want to be like. In, in a match. And I do think that Hero of Time did play this this game very well. I thought that he was really good at making it so that Kala wasn't able to play his game. It just turns out that like he got that low percent kill or whatever. Um, like and he ended up at the at the sort of like the bad end of a bunch of combos where he just like barely got killed. But 
I would say pay attention to Hero of Time's Link to know how to play a character in a way that I believe like the character is not optimal for, but sometimes suboptimal play is the best kind of thing that you could do um, to counter certain play styles. If you play the character the same way every time, then you're going to get really uh, stale results. And I think that Hero of Time is pushing Link in a way that I think is very interesting. And it was very fun to watch. Also, props to Kala for eventually winning this set. Who is this guy and why did he be Hero of Time? Camilo is so good. <laughs> but okay. Anyways, enough gushing. I'll see y'all later.